Hey everyone, Bart of the Creed here. Today I'm bringing a comprehensive guide to edge guarding. As you may notice, this guide is very long because it attempts to cover everything you'll need to pull off a proper edge guard for everyone from bronze to platinum. As such, I've split it up into two parts and structured this video with annotations if you want to skip to the next section and timestamps in the URL. I'll start by talking about general edge guard techniques and advanced techniques in part one. Then, in part two, weapon specific edge guards, and finally, legend specific edge guards. Now enough with the explanation, let's get started. In lower ranks, I many times see players simply allowing their opponents to make their way back onto the stage with no consequence. While the Great Chasm below may look daunting, you have two jumps, a recovery, and a dodge to make sure you can make it back onto the stage. This is plenty of time to allow you to hit your opponent and reject them from getting back onto the stage while still making it back yourself. As mentioned, players have four moves to get back onto the stage. This is exactly enough so that assuming they're hit from directly on stage, your opponent can always make it back on stage as long as they're not knocked out of map boundaries completely. This makes edge guarding extremely important in Brahalla, since the only other way to kill off edges is to rack up a ton of damage. Probably one of the safest and most reliable ways to edge guard is to use your ground pound, which is your down heavy attack in the air. In Brahalla, the ground pound is designed to hit hard and hit straight down. When recovering, your opponent is likely to want to make their way over to the wall, where you can easily be waiting to ground pound them down into the bottom of the map. While ground pounding is an easy option, it's also predictable, and if your opponent is smart, they'll steer clear of being in any position where you can ground pound them. But don't think your options are limited. Simply getting out into the open and attacking them can go a long way. Use a side air to pop them up into the side of the map. Use a recovery if they're trying to get over you. Possibilities are practically endless. Just make sure to vary your options to keep your enemy on their toes. The more you repeat things, the more predictable you become. While attacking using moves can leave you vulnerable to counterattacks, one of the safer options you can use is to throw gadgets. If aimed correctly, a bomb or crocky ball can force your opponent to use up their dodge to avoid getting hit by a mine, opening them up to unarmed attack. Large weapons like bows and spears can really be good at this, as their wide hitboxes can make it very difficult to avoid simply by moving away. One technique that can be doubly deadly, called the slow throw, is to throw a gadget up and use your forward momentum to get the gadget to fall over the ledge. As the weapon makes its way down, you can follow up with your own ground pound or other attack to create a wall of hitboxes that can be almost impossible to avoid. If your opponent does get past you onto the wall, or you're too late to get to the ledge to have any hope of stopping their jumps, you can still guard the actual ledge. If they try to jump in, hit them with a neutral attack. If they try to get over you, use a neutral signature. If they try to dodge through you, punish their dodge with a side signature. Whatever the case, not allowing your opponent room to return to the stage can go a long way in creating pressure and forcing your opponent to make mistakes. Just as it's important to know how to edge guard, you should also know how to get around people edge guarding you. Simply by knowing the different ways someone can edge guard you has already given you an advantage. Once you know their options, it's a matter of expecting what will happen next and reacting accordingly. However, if you're still having trouble remembering, repetition can be your biggest ally. If your opponent is using the same few tactics to edge guard, you can recognize it in future and avoid it next time they try to use it. You can not only avoid edge guard attempts, but also counterattack. If they're using ground pound a lot, dodge through them and respond with your own ground pound. If they're coming out to attack you, time your own dodge correctly and you can counterattack. Recognizing patterns is extremely important in Brahalla, and if you can succeed in reading your opponent, you'll have no problem getting back on stage. While Bahala only has a few pieces of game tech, they can be used extremely well for edge guarding. Slide charging a move will allow you to create large, long lasting hitboxes right at the wall of the stage. Gravity cancels allow you to expand your options with signatures in the air. And fast falling can make approaches more fluid, allowing you to meet your opponent for an attack more quickly, and they can be combined with side air to create a swift dropping attack. These tech, however, are high risk, high reward. Slide charging leaves you vulnerable and gives your opponent time to find a way around your signature. Gravity cancels, burn your dodge, and puts you on a 3 second cooldown, which can be devastating if your opponent is in a position to attack. Fast falling is a double edged sword. Bringing you closer to your opponent can catch them by the surprise, but if they're expecting it, you'll have to put yourself in a position where counterattack can be easier. 
As long as you use your attack for edge guarding sparingly, it can be extremely valuable. It should also be noted that gravity cancels can be a great tool for getting back onto the map, and with certain moves heavily punishing an opponent who is attempting to edge guard you. In addition, mixing fast falling into your play can help you be more unpredictable, making it difficult for your opponent to edge guard you. While some weapons may be more or less difficult to edge guard with, the unarmed moveset is a universal moveset that everyone has with certain moves that do an excellent job at edge guarding. Ground pound is a move that comes out relatively fast. Even better, however, is how well it combos from a throw. Simply throwing a weapon and immediately following up with a ground pound can be a great way to get a combo that even works with gadgets like Crocky Balls. Alternatively, you can use bombs and mines on enemies who haven't taken much damage. The unarmed air is also an extremely good move in wet edge guard situations. With good priority, using it on a wall is a great way to move your opponent into a position for a follow-up, and its continuous use can be extremely deadly. In the air, by far the most important tool players have is their air dodge, which can be used to dodge attacks if other players are attempting to edgeguard them. When you're edgeguarding, a good opponent will be expecting these attacks, and you can use this to your advantage. Simply by being near them, you can apply pressure on opponents which can cause them to use their dodge early without you having to even bother using an attack. Once an enemy has used this dodge, their only option for responding to other attacks is to move in time to avoid them or do a different attack first to move like a recovery, neither of which are as reliable as just dodging. While simply baiting the dodge by being near the opponent can work, it's more common to bait out the dodge by using something like a weapon throw, which will almost always force a dodge to come out, allowing an easy follow-up such as a ground pound. Gimping is a term originally coined in Super Smash Bros. It involves killing an opponent by interrupting their attempts to get to the wall of the stage without the need to build up damage first, which can lead to a very early kill. A successful gimp involves being able to read and predict your opponent's movements well and responding accordingly. Remember the four resources your opponent has at their disposal, the two jumps, the air dodge, and the recovery. Also remember that their character becomes slightly grayed out after using the jumps. Some recovery moves will be harder to punish, while others will be easier. So it's important to adapt to the situation. Finally, the dodge is the hardest to get rid of. Here, the aforementioned air dodge bait can be extremely useful. The dodge will come back after 3 seconds, so be sure to quickly dispatch them after they have used the dodge before the next one can come out. In competitive play, gimping can be extremely upsetting on the player it's being used against, and is a valuable asset as it takes away the time, effort, and risk of having to directly attack your opponent and whittle down their health. While new players will cling to the wall when recovering back onto the map, players quickly learn that attacks many times target that area, especially in regards to ground pounds. As such, as you get higher in the ladder, you'll start to notice people go into what I like to call the push-off column. Push-off column is this area that players go into when they push themselves over the wall, either by dodging or jumping. This area is safe from ground pounds if your opponent aims at where you would be if you're clinging to the wall. However, if you see that your opponent likes to prematurely go into this area, you can take advantage of this. In higher ranks, you may find it more beneficial to ground pound at the push-off column instead of right at the face of the stage. Another thing players will do is use the aforementioned slow weapon throw in the push-off column followed up with a ground pound. Like most of these techniques, try not to always target the push-off column. Instead, read your opponent and use the previous patterns to guess whether they're going to stick to the wall or head toward the push-off column. I mentioned this in the basic section, but it's even more important in high level play. While most edge guarding takes place after you've knocked your opponent off the stage, many times you can simply bait your opponent into a position to let you edge guard them. When an opponent attempts to edge guard you, if they're too aggressive, you can follow up with an easy counter attack. The most common forms of this involves dodging through a ground pound and immediately ground pounding, or sidestepping a ground pound and hanging a stair off the wall. Whatever the case may be, anytime your opponent steps into the edge guarding area, don't forget to look out for an opportunity to turn the tables on them and force them into a defensive position. Overall, the most important thing about edge guarding on any level is to mix things up. The more predictable you are, the less effective you'll be. Hopefully all of these tips I've given you will give you a large palette of different options you can use to take your opponent down. That's it for part 1 of this comprehensive guide to edge guarding. For weapon specific and character specific tips, head on over to part 2. If this guide helped you, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a quick thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to catch a new guide coming out every other week. Thanks for watching.